Right, in this video I'm getting very serious. As you can see, there's a camera there, there's a camera here, and there's another camera here. And I'm gonna show you, in this control panel, five control panel wiring mistakes that beginners make to enable you to be more confident working on control panels. Not only working on them, but also designing them, manufacturing, fault finding and testing them. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing might be obvious, but how do you get, how do you get this? I mean, it looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Let's be honest. How do you get this to this on the outside? And then how do you get to this on the inside? And there's that old saying, isn't there, where it goes something along the lines of piss poor planning creates piss poor performance, something like that. So what do I mean by planning? I mean designing and documenting before you even go down the route of actually putting things together. And I've seen this time and time again where people just buy all their components, they buy a control panel and they just try and get all of their components into the panel, they completely overlook spacing and size of components and trunking and all of this stuff. They just completely overlook it. They don't even think that far ahead when it comes to building it. They just get it all. They think, yeah, it'll fit into that panel and away they go. And then the reality hits when they actually start building it that they run out of space. So this is a massive thing. It's designing or it's planning and designing things and then documenting things to then work from so you don't encounter this is a potential problem. There's obviously other things that go into this, but this is a massive thing. So yeah, planning. So planning where the terminal blocks are. So everything that's out in the field, where are these terminal blocks in terms of, are they, is it top entry or is it bottom entry? And then things just like spacing, spacing components and DIN rails. So, you know, there's enough space in between so you can get to cables, you know, you can actually get your fingers in between the trunking and the actual component so you can get cables in and out the trunking as well this is something that people completely overlook like where are your cables running and also bearing in mind trunking for the outgoing cables you know whether they're at the top or at the bottom so i mean that's just a couple of examples what i mean by planning and another thing is even planning to have extra space within the control panel so not using up all of your din rail space if you do have to add extra terminal blocks or extra components or extra relays, you know, you've got space to do that. So what I'd recommend is before you do all of this, obviously you create your bill of materials, that's relatively straightforward, but then you actually plan out, even if it's just on a scrap of paper, the layout of everything. Now, obviously you need to know the sizes of everything that's going in. And this is where using a CAD software like ProjiCAD or AutoCAD is really, really helpful because what you can do let me show you, is you can just create blocks of these sizes and then you can move them around within the software and create a layout that actually makes sense where you can fit everything in, you can get all your trunk in, it's all spaced correctly, you know, there's, there's a logical layout and flow and you can plan it before you actually come to do it because it's far cheaper to, to do that within the software where you can make mistakes and move things around until you get it right. Then you print that out and then you work to that and basically take that layout design and drawing and picture and put it into reality, into the physical world. The second thing is to have manufacturing line thinking. Whereby what I mean by that is doing one thing 10 times rather than doing 10 separate things once. So it's having like a Henry Ford, the, the founder of Ford Motors, production line way of thinking, you know, where you've got terminals where one person does one thing multiple times and you've got to kind of think like that. So just a few examples, what that might look like is, well, first of all, you, you, you mark out your trunking and your DIN rails and you do that first. You fix all of those first. Then you add all of the components. So all the terminal blocks, all of the MCBs, you get all the components mounted first. And then here's the big thing is when it comes to wiring what I always do is I work out you know roughly how many cables are going from here to here so let's say that there's 10 and then I measure okay this is the, the what is the furthest point here to here and I cut all the cables that same length so yes you're going to have some extra cable being used up that goes to waste but this enables me to work in a 
kind of production line manner where I've got 10 cables the same length. What I do is I measure all of those cables out 10 times. I cut them all 10 times, the same thing 10 times. Then I would label them. So I could, these are all starting with an eight. So I could do all the eights first. Then the second one is zero. So I could do all the zeros then. And then yes, I have to do them individually for the final cable idents. I'm doing this on both ends at the same time. So I've got both ends of the cable in my hand and I'm doing that at the same time. Then I can do the stripping and the cable terminations all at the same time. And then if I chose to, that final little bit of excess cable, I could just measure that out and cut it, terminate it. Next one, measure it, cut it, terminate it. It's all done. You know, the big things have all been done. The multiple things that need doing have been done in a block. The next thing is just thinking about wiring bits within the control panel in a logical manner. So wiring in a logical step-by-step -step manner and maybe thinking a couple, maybe three steps ahead. And there's two parts to this, like the layout of components and the logical wiring and how they get from A to B to C, but then also the order in which you wire those things. So what I mean on the first side of this, so in terms of the layout of components and the wiring, let's think about it logically. So this is a top cable entry panel or a top outbound cable that go that the cables go out to the field so it makes sense to have the terminal blocks at the top of the panel ready to go out and we've also got our main incoming isolator here as well with the earth again makes sense to have it up at the top of the panel and then from the incoming so that's outgoing but then the incoming how are we then distributing that power and taking it to different places within the panel. So incoming here, we want to then distribute the, the protective earth, L1 and neutral. So L1, you can see just a nice simple path over here to the term, uh, to the MCBs. The neutral, that just goes straight up here and then we can distribute that neutral as we needed. And then our protective earth just goes up here on our earth bar, which is then again distributed out across the panel. So neutral and protective earth, that's pretty simple, straightforward stuff. But then line one, so you can see short path in here and then it's distributed across the MCBs and we're distributing it rather than using cable loops, pretty common practice to use a buzz bar. And then on the other side of these MCBs, what are they then supplying? And this is now tying into like the logical order of wiring. So it might be worth working out where all these supplies going first. And maybe you cut all of those cables to a certain length and then you work out where they're going. So some of them might be going to the top here of these contactors. Some of them or one of them might be going here to the transformer and other ones are going up here to supply things out in the field. But the rest of the power is through this transformer. And we need to be able to distribute this 24 volts like across the panel. So then it's like, okay, well, this is going down here. We distribute it across here where we got some space. And then these circuits are being distributed across the panel. And not only the positive, but also the negative as well. So you, you might want to think about how, for example, zero volts. Well, I know that there's a zero volt that needs to go to every relay A2 connection. So you might take a cable from here and then do little loops in and out, in and out, in and out. But you'll see on these relays, these Wago relays, you don't have to do that because we're actually using little sort of buzz bar bridges at the back there that I can think we can use for every eight relays. So as you can see, we got a zero volts here and then we're not using another one till the, the ninth relay because we got a bridge bridging that zero volts across these eight relays. And following on from how we then wire things in a logical order, it might be, for example, that you choose to do all the terminal blocks last. So you can create a nice little um, finish like this. So when someone who's working on the panel, a service engineer or maintenance engineer is working on it, you know, they can, you know, the documentation's lost, whatever, they can quite easily trace these cables throughout the panel. You know, they're all on top of everything else. You're not having to dig behind things. They're all here straight away where they can trace things out. So that might be something you consider doing last. And this might be another thing, the door that you consider doing last, either taking the loom from the panel side out to the door, or maybe you do all of this wiring 
on here first and you have like a nice length of cable that can stretch the furthest part of the panel and you do everything within the panel first and then the final thing is you you put this loom together and you terminate the final bits within the panel and it is quite difficult to articulate what i mean when i'm not like talking specifically through steps with reference to the schematics and the designs but hopefully you get what i mean by what i'm saying in terms of uh, logical wiring approaches and how things are laid out to what makes sense in terms of how cables are distributed and how components are wired within the panel now the next thing is not double checking but triple checking so before you do any drilling or cutting of the panel you know of the back plate and certainly the door this is always the scariest moment before you do any cutting drilling or just triple check double check your measurements the amount of times had i not triple check quadruple check the amount of times i would have bulls things up and messed up the door for example and had to start all over again or order a new door in and then have to wait for that door to come in I, I would have made that mistake so many times had I not triple checked quadruple checked been absolutely 100% confident and certain the holes that I'm about to drill and the cuts that I'm going about about to cut are correct so that saved me out so many times now the final thing is actually testing your system before it goes off to site I like, don't just assume that everything's going to be rosy because i'm telling you now it's not if you're wiring this over the, a prolonged period a week two weeks mistakes happen human nature we will introduce mistakes we will have a lapse of concentration we wire something in the wrong place and it won't test out and you don't want to be testing things on site if you can test things off site you know where you've built it because anyone that's been on site just you'll understand that there's all these on-site pressures you know that's going to put you in a more heightened less relaxed state and when you're emotional and stressed it's harder to think logically and to fault find and test things you need to be thinking in a systematic logical manner to be able to do it efficiently and, and quickly so it's just not worth the stress just do all you can off-site that goes with anything actually not just testing and fault finding do as much as you possibly can off-site to reduce what i've just gone over so the first test that i would do and this is a bit time consuming but it's worth doing especially if you haven't done many panels before is just do continuity end-to-end -end tests on absolutely every single cable um, and you'd work through your designs your schematics that you've wired to and just go through that with a, a multi-tester, a continuity tester, and just go end-to-end -end on everything. So for example, the zero volts on this transformer, I would go, boo, no, I would go here, <laughs> and then I'd go over here to this distribution bar and tap it there, boo, great, I've got continuity. I might go on the other side, the let's just say on the supply side over here, I might go from here and then find out where the MCB is over here, and just again, boo, just check that and just you go through the whole panel doing that and that will give you full clarity on whether the cables have been wired correctly end to end and then you want to do short circuit tests so for example you might want to go across l1 and neutral and make sure that there's no continuity you might want to go across the 24 volt positive and the zero volt here and make sure that there's no short circuit so you would do that in all the places where there could be a dead short you then want to switch things on and go live you want to check voltages are correct because a lot of these components can only handle a certain voltage and you might have over voltage or under voltage and things might not work correctly so you want to check all your voltages dial in your power supply voltages check those as well you might have to adjust them slightly and then you want to just do a full functionality test where you're ultimately connecting cables in here and you're mimicking devices out in the field and then making sure that the system you know is functioning as you'd expect it to you know whether that's manually checking things or you're running things through the control modules the plc's as well full functionality test as much as you possibly can whilst you're in the workshop whilst you're off-site now if you want to learn how to deliver real world projects like this one start to finish you want to advance your career or grow your business in controls automation bms Click the link in the description, we can help you with that. See you later.